In this video, I'm going to give you a perception of what integration is for those of you who are beginning to learn it and for those of you who are somewhat unfamiliar with the symbols. We shall start with the graph of y equals x squared. I would like to calculate the area under the curve from 3 to 6. One way I could get an approximation is to use three rectangles as it is a trivial operation to calculate the area of a rectangle. I will call the width delta x and the height of each rectangle y1, y2 and y3. If I add the areas of the rectangles, I get an answer of 50. The area under the curve is 63, so there is quite a discrepancy which is due to the omission of the area above the rectangles, shown here in red. The equation I am using multiplies the width of each rectangle, delta x, by each height, giving us the area. If you have not seen the sigma symbol before, it means the sum of a sequence of terms, in this case, the sum of the three areas. One way of obtaining a more accurate answer is to halve the width of the rectangles, which gives us six of them. This now gives us a more accurate answer of 56.375. If the width was halved again, giving us 12 rectangles, the answer is 59.65625, which is even closer. As you can see, if we kept decreasing the width of the rectangles towards zero, the answer becomes more accurate until the rectangles are unimaginably thin, making the width into an infinitesimal, which is something that is almost zero, or you can think of it as an unimaginably small number above zero, or infinitely small. Let's see what the equations look like now. As delta x approaches zero, it becomes dx, which is an infinitesimal, or if you wish, an infinitely small number. We are using the integral symbol now instead of the sigma symbol. It resembles an elongated S, which is no accident. It stands for the Latin word summa, which means sum, as we are taking the sum of infinitely thin rectangles. Of course, you cannot calculate the sum of the areas of an infinite quantity of rectangles, so other techniques need to be employed. The equation represents the height of the rectangles, regardless of how complicated it appears to be. The dx part can be thought of as the width of the rectangles. This type of integration is called definite integration, which gives us the area. If the upper and lower bounds were omitted, then this would be indefinite integration, which some people refer to as the antiderivative, because you are doing the opposite of differentiation. To complete the example, to find the area underneath the curve of x squared, I could use numerical methods such as the trapezium rule or Gauss-Cronrod quadrature, which results in an approximate answer or sometimes an exact one, but I'm going to use the antiderivative of x squared, which is x cubed over 3, and place the upper and lower bounds into the equation to give us exactly 63. So, an integral with upper and lower bounds is called definite integration, which gives us an area, and without them it is indefinite integration, which is the opposite of differentiation. There are numerous other types of integrals not shown in this video, such as surface or contour integrals. I hope I have clarified things by giving you a way of understanding what integration is. Thank you for watching.